What's up? I'm Pip, and today we're going to talk about upgrading the Grand Larceny Precon deck from Outlaws of Thunder Junction. We're going to have 10, 20, 50, and $100 upgrades. Our commander today is Dante Kenny Acquisitor. If you've got sticky fingers, you're going to love this deck. Conti secretly steals cards from the top of your opponent's library every time one of your creatures connects with them. Then, he lets you cast those cards at a discounted rate using any color map. We're gonna be spitting out evasive creatures, drawing a lot of cards, stacking up on counter spells, and putting our opponent's decks to work against them. Naturally, we're gonna wanna cast all of our ill-gotten gains. So, we're playing a ton of ramp in the form of creatures, spells, and mana rocks. So, if you love a good stick up, saddle up on right? and let's get it up. If you'd like to see the full deck list, check down in the description. There's a link to my mox field where you can check out any of my decks. Underneath the deck lists is a section called Considering, where you can find more expensive options for any of my decks. Now, back to the deck. Gaunty Canny Acquisitor. I keep wanting to say Inquisitor. It just, I don't know. Acquisitor. 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 Inquisitor? Spells you cast but don't own cost one less to cast. We have a couple of other cards that stack up on this ability, which is going to be nice. Whenever one or more creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, look at the top card of that player's library and exile it face down. You may play that card for as long as it remains exiled and mana of any type can be spent to cast that spell. We do have a handful of other cards that do similar things so that we can take advantage of his first ability. But I think we want to just give him a bunch of tools so that he can do his work. So we've added a bunch of invasive creatures, card draw, counter spell, and most importantly, ramp. We're going to have so many options with the cards we're drawing and having access to cards from up to three other players. I think it would be best if we just give ourselves the tools to utilize those extra resources. Brood Broodlord. This is a big boy. 8 mana, 7 6 flyer with Convoke. We do have a bunch of cheap creatures, so we might be able to convoke him out pretty early. But when we do, we're going to search our deck for any card, exile it face down, and we can play it for the rest of the game. I know I say I don't usually like tutors, I think one is okay here or there, especially when we're not playing any combos. But more importantly, what this card is going to do for us is allow us to cast our cards from exile using convoke. If you don't know what convoke is, you can basically tap any creature you control to produce mana to cast a spell. All of your creatures more or less become dorks. Adding this option to the cards we've stolen from our opponents is going to allow us to play them so much more easily. Elder Brain. Check out the big brain on bread! You're a smart mother- Whenever this attacks a player, it doesn't even need to connect. You exile all cards from that player's hands, then they draw that many cards, which is not great, unless they had some real bangers in their hand. Then you may play lands and cast spells from among the exiled cards for as long as they remain exiled. It's like Gonti's ability on acid. Outrageous Robbery. I'm just going to call it the Gonti ability, so I don't have to explain it every single time. This is going to do the Gonti ability for X, and it's at instant speed. And Kali Hunter. This is an adventure card, so it allows us to do something early and late. The adventure side isn't that great in this deck, unless somebody deals with one of our early evasive threats. But the big boy's ability is pretty bonkers. Once each turn, you're going to be able to pay zero instead of the casting cost for any card you're casting from exile. It says once each turn, which means you can do this on your turn and each of your opponent's turns. That's going to allow us to rip through those stolen cards very quickly. Absolute classic. We're going to be playing this because we may want to get our commander out really early and get the ball rolling. Later in the game, we're going to have so many options with all the cards we've stolen. Losing a little bit of card advantage isn't a big deal. Sakura Tribe Elder. This is just good mana ramp on a body. And we can choose it to connect with an undefended player to steal a card. Counter Spell. In case we want to counter a spell. Cultivate. One of the game's best ramp spells. Talisman of Curiosity. Talisman of Dominance. Talisman of Resilience. I've added the talismans here as another ramp option. We have spells, rocks, and creatures so that we can't lose to any single strategy. Obviously, creatures would be the best for us, but that leaves us open to losing them to a board wipe. These are going to allow us to recover from a board wipe a little easier than creature versions. Rewind. It allows us to counter something a little later in the game, and allow us to leave mana open to do something else in that same turn cycle. Looter Il Core. Whenever it hits a player, you can draw a card and discard a card. This is going to give us some card selection, 
and it's evasive. Shadow is an old mechanic, and it's kind of similar to flying. Except shadow creatures can only interact with shadow creatures while attacking or blocking. Siren Storm Tamer. 1-1 one, one flyer, so it's got some evasion, for one. Then you have the option to sacrifice it to counter target spell or ability that targets a creature you control. Far Haven Elf. This is land ramp on a body, which we can then use to turn around and smack one of the undefended players and steal their cards. Yava Maya Dryad. This is land ramp on a body, but it can find a forest and not just a basic, which means we can pull one of our dual lands that has the forest type. This also has forest look, so it has evasion against any of the other green players at the table. Undo Giant. This is just land ramp on a body, and it's probably our worst option in this arena, but it's still pretty good. Negate. This is just going to stop one of your opponent's nasty non-creature spells. Disdainful Stroke. Most of your opponent's linchpin spells are going to cost more than 4 mana, so this is going to be very useful. Creeping Tar Pit. This is a nice dual land, and it's going to become an unblockable creature. Not too bad for a land slot. Tangled Islet. And Haunted Mire. I know these lands aren't great, but when we do play cards that can search them up directly, their stock does rise. Alchemist Refuge. So for two mana, we can play spells as though they had flash. And with all the ramp we're playing, I don't think that two mana is going to be all that difficult later in the game. So that's it for the $10 version. Let's move on to the $20 version. Cryptic Coat. This is going to be an unblockable creature that pretty much never goes away. Night Vale Spectre. 3 mana, 2 3 flyer that essentially has the Gaunti ability. Changeling Outcast. A nice little 1 1 unblockable creature for 1. Deprive. Pretty much just another counter spell. That's a little bit of a drawback, but we do have some ETP effects on our lands that we may want to take advantage of. And not to mention the lands we can cycle from our hands if we need to get them back and draw a card in a pinch. Arcane Denial. This is probably the best counter spell in Commander. Primeval Herald. Land ramp on a body, and any time it attacks, you also get to ramp. Far seek. Search your library for a plains, island, swamp, or mountain card and put it onto the battlefield tapped. This is going to allow us to find some of the dual lands we have in our deck because it doesn't say basic. That's it for the $20 version. Let's move right on to the 50. Toski, bearer of secrets. Every one of our creatures that connects with an opponent, we're going to draw a card. With the amount of evasion we're playing in this deck, Toski is going to draw us a ton of cards. Talion, the Kindly Lord. 3-4 Flyer for 4. First of all, she has some evasion. Then, we're going to guess a number. And then, whenever an opponent casts a spell with CMC equal to that number, we're going to draw a card and they're going to lose 2 life. Earlier in the game, I usually guess 2 or 3. And later in the game, I usually guess 3 or 4. Coastal Piracy. This is the Toski effect, but on an enchantment. Blooming Marsh. And Botanical Sanctum. I'm going to be adding some of the fast lands to this deck and using up a lot of our budget in this version for lands. Our deck is relying on stealing cards from our opponents, which means we're going to need to get our tools out there consistently and quickly. So having a mana base that has the right color mana is going to be the key to our consistency. In that same vein, we're going to be playing Clearwater Path and Dark Boar Path. That's it for the $50 version. Let's move on to the $100 version. Birds of Paradise. Can't get more consistent than this. Consistency, Birds of Paradise is thy name. Mystic Remora. Do you want to draw a bunch of cards and only spend one mana? Huh? Have you read Mystic Remora? Whenever an opponent casts a non-creature spell, you may draw a card unless that player pays four. It has cumulative upkeep, which means the first upkeep you pay one, then two, then three, then four. On each subsequent turn. Talk about value. Cemetery Prowler. When this enters the battlefield or attacks, exile a card from a graveyard. So this is going to be some small amount of graveyard hate for whoever the recursion player is at your table. And then it's going to help reduce the cost of those cards you're casting from exile. Agent of Treachery. When he enters the battlefield, you're going to steal one of your opponent's permanents. And then at the beginning of your instant, if you control three or more permanents you don't own, you're going to draw three cards. All those cards we've taken from exile are going to count towards this. And we're probably going to draw three cards every time we cast this spell. Hedge Maze, Underground Mortuary, and Undercity Sewers. I've added all three of our own color surveil lands here because we can fetch them with a couple of the cards in our deck. And being able to have that card selection is such a nice ability on the land. They are a little bit pricey right now, but I imagine they'll come down. And they're also in the current set's packs, so you might have a few of them laying around anyway. 
All right, let's talk about the cards that are coming out. I'm gonna break them up into four categories. Bad, meh, okay, and pretty good. Let's start with the bad category. These are cards you probably want to cut no matter what. First on the chopping block, Cold-Eyed Selkie. A 1-1 one, one for 3 is just not good enough. Kima, Stalking Shadow. This just isn't on theme enough. We want to get most of our unblockable creatures in under 2 mana. Void Attendant. I guess this gives us something to do with the lands that we steal from our opponent, but it's not very good. See ya. Dazzling Sphinx. Not consistent, too much of a slot machine. The Mimeoplasm. We're not really milling our opponents, so I'm not sure why this card's even in here. Silent Blade Oni. This card is pretty sweet, but just too expensive. And you have the potential to really whiff on it. Thieving Amalgam. It's just too expensive for what it does. It is an ape snake, though, which is one hell of a creature type. Extract Brain. The potential to miss on this card is just too high to want to play it. Feed the Swarm. If we did like single target removal, there are tons of better options than this. Stolen Goods. The possibility to miss on this is just too high for 4 mana. Dark Steel Ingot. I'd much rather just play 2 mana rocks or ramp cards. No thank you. Access Tunnel. I don't see any synergy here. I don't know why this is here. We already have plenty of evasive creatures. Reliquary Tower. Generally when I'm planning on having more than 7 cards, I want to play 2 or 3 effects at least that allow me to hold on to all. Alright, let's move on to the M category. These are cards you might want to leave in your deck if you don't have better options. Trigon Predator. 2-3 flyer for 3, decent stats, decent body, with some evasion, but they're going to have plenty of time to answer it before it actually connects. Tazera Ruthless Stalker. Whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player, put a 1-1 one -one counter on that creature. I do like this effect in a deck that has this many unblockable creatures, and I wish I could have found a way to work something like this in, but this is just not it. Blade Griff Prototype. When this connects, the player it hit gets to destroy a permanent controlled by any other player besides you. I suppose if you're really buddy-buddy at your table, you could get this to do some actual work. But at 5 mana, and you need to cut a backroom deal, it's not exactly a slam dunk. Diluvian Primordial. This doesn't really have much synergy with what we're trying to do. We don't have any way of getting cards into players' graveyards that easily. And for 7 mana, for it to be one of our payoffs? No. Arcane Heist. Again, we're not really milling players, so I don't know how we plan on getting cards on their graveyard. I do like that you can attach this to a creature and reuse it, but we don't have an engine to really support it. Plasma Capture. It's like a poor man's mana drain, but I think it's a little too heavy on symbols. Dream Thief's Bandana. This card is fine, but it's not going to set the world on fire. Chaos Wand. I like having this effect on something repeatable, but it's kind of expensive to activate. I can see it being pretty good in a more controlling shell, though. Alright, let's move on to the OK category. These are cards I wouldn't mind leaving in my deck, but it's not too hard to find better options. Invisible Stalker. A 1-1 one, one hexproof unblockable creature. We can find plenty of these type of creatures at 1 mana, so we've opted to play those. Silhana Ledgewalker. This is essentially the same thing, and I've cut it for the same reason. Thieving Varmint. 2-1 Death Touch for 2, and you can pay a life to get 2 mana of any color, and you can only spend this on spells you don't own. This is a nice little ramp tool for this deck, but I'd rather have something a little more permanent like a rock, or a land off of a ramp spell. Alright, let's move on to the pretty good category. These are cards I almost kept in the deck, and I wouldn't fault you if you did. Thieving Skydiver. 2-1 Evasive Creature for 2, and when it enters play, you could potentially steal one of your opponent's artifacts. So, it's not a dead card later in the game. I like it well enough. Orochi Soul Reaver. This is going to manifest a card when any of your creatures connect and create a treasure. Six mana cost is a little pricey, but I'd imagine you'd be casting this as a ninja to 95% of the time. It's not exactly on plan with everything else in the deck, but it does ramp you and create creatures. Fallen Shinobi. Whenever this connects to a player, you're going to exile the top two cards of the library, and then you can play those two cards without paying their mana cost. Plus, you can ninjutsu it in. This card's actually very good, but it's a little pricey. Culling Ritual. We should probably have some sort of board wipe in this deck, but I don't love having something that hits small creatures when we're playing as many small creatures as we are. I'd opt to switch this out for a more foolproof board wipe. Cunning Rhetoric. I don't know how well this is going to disincentivize other players from attacking you, but your pool of exile cards will grow every time someone decides to come at you. 
Mine's Dilation. This was a tough cut. I opted to replace it with a few threats that are a little more proactive. I think this is a very good option, and it's probably better in a lot of games. So that's it for our Grand Larceny upgrades. I think the deck is very strong out of the box, and all it really needs help with is consistency. If everything goes according to plan, you're going to be drowning in options. So, what'd you think? Do you like it? Am I an idiot? Let me know in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one.